So the third point, first point I said we saw is how to grow. Second point we saw last week is how to apply. These two, if you have missed it, go to the internet and uh, check out on those two. It's a very powerful message. So th today the third point is unity of the faith. So we who have been saved and put together or planted together in a church. That is the plan of God. We are all like plants which was been rooted. We are supposed to be rooted and grounded. We have been sowed into the land that you may grow, you may have spiritual growth. If that spiritual growth doesn't come, it is because there is some reason that that plant is not in a position to receive the nourishment. But God wants us to grow spiritually. God wants us to be mature spiritually. God wants them to be like him in our spirit, in a man, strong. Because this flesh is our sinful nature. The sinful nature will come forth or show up whenever we operate in the flesh. In other words, jealousy pride, ego, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. All these are from the flesh, the sinful nature. <clears throat> from the spirit, what comes? Love, 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 love. Joy, peace and all that is the offshoot of love. I will never call it as nine fruit of the Holy Spirit because I don't believe it is written as fruit. It's not written fruits. It is more than one, it should be fruits. It says fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. That's singular. The offshoot of the fruit, which is love, is joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, long suffering, all this comes as an offshoot of this love. So, if you have love, 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 and if you reveal this love, love, that means the spirit is operating. The spirit of God is operating. Our flesh is not operating. We have yielded. Our spirit man is yielded to the Holy Spirit. The spirit man has got more power over us than our flesh or than our soul. Soul is the seat of all emotions. Soul is the seat of all emotions. A person can be soulish or he can be spirit. He can be either governed by the spirit or governed by the soul. The body goes according to which it has been governed by. If your whole system is governed by the spirit, it will show forth love, love, love. So there won't be any way that you will hate anybody. There's no way that you will get uh, offended with anybody. Because the word of God tells us, let us start with this verse. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12, sorry, um, yeah, Ephesians, were, English is 12 and 13, if anybody has got Tamil Bible, it is 11 and 12. Ephesians 4 <coughs> verse 12 to 14, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come 
in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let us stand. <clears throat> Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bring this word of God to your throne of grace. We pray, Father, that your might and power rest upon this word. Let the truth be revealed by the power of the Holy Spirit that you speak, Lord, to your people, that they may be exhorted, edified, comforted, and strengthened in the spirit, that they may live a life of dominion on this earth, that they may receive, giving their hearts, keeping their hearts open wide, they receive this truth into their spirit with gladness and with, mixed with faith, in Jesus' name, that they may live a life of dominion. Amen, 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 amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> so, what is a church all about? A church is for perfecting of the saints. So, every day we are being perfected. From one level of perfection to the next level. Today, what you receive, it will perfect you in the area where it's to be perfected by this truth. Not beyond that. But if you need more perfection, you should come next week again and get the word, the truth inside. So there you may get perfected. So you can never say, I'm oh, all perfect and everything. No, you would have been taken away like Elisha. Or you would have been taken away like Enoch. Elijah, sorry, Elijah. Or you would have been taken away like Enoch. Still we need to be perfected. That's why still we are on this earth. You and me are being perfected day by day. The word of God is teaching us. Perfection means what? See, that means there's a standard which God is expecting. What is the standard? Jesus. What is the standard he's expecting? God Almighty? Jesus. He's expecting Jesus to be the stature. That's why it's written there. And see here in the 13th verse it says... Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, I'll come to that later, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So who is our standard? Christ. We should come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Don't look at the pastor, don't look at another believer, don't look, your focus should be, I want to become like Christ Jesus. Your fellow believer may have imperfection. Your pastor may have imperfection. Am I right? That's why God did not tell you to see any man on this earth. He said, look unto Abraham or look unto Jesus. You may say, you, have, you found a lot of lack in me. You may go home and discuss in your house. Pastor, he's not, he's, he's not like this. He's not like this. He's got so much of lack. Yes, I am perfected day by day. I agree. If I was perfected, I was in the fullness of the stature of Christ Jesus. Ah, I would have gone. The Lord would have taken me. Rapture. Hallelujah. So here we see the church is a place where we are being perfected. And the truth from the world is the essence which is given into our spirit for perfection. Unless we receive this truth without being offended, without rejecting, without resisting, without getting angry, all these things in the spirit will make the truth come and bounce back. But if you receive the truth the way it is, with gladness and with a 
or so much of happiness and with faith, that will change your life. Saying, this is what the word of God is. This is how I have to live. live. This is how Jesus was on this earth. My standard is Jesus, nobody else. Nobody else. While we speak the word of God, the word of God is Jesus. You are receiving Jesus into your spirit through the word of God. You cannot resist the word of God. You cannot get angry with the word of God. Because you are getting angry with Jesus. You are resisting Jesus from entering your life. Faith cometh by hearing and the hearing comes by the word of God. Hearing, spiritual hearing comes when you are seated to hear the word of God. Your spiritual ears open. When you sit at home, your spiritual ears don't open. When you are seated in the church, just to hear the word of God, your spiritual ear opens. That is when the word comes. And that word brings you faith. That faith cometh. That means it doesn't, your, whatever is inside is not enough. It has to come into you. The faith cometh. You will arise. You will shine. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That you may be seen as an example for others. The Gentiles will see the glory of God upon you. They'll be wanting what you have in your life. Hallelujah. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Matured believers. Once they have the maturity, they are perfected. They have to contribute to the work of the ministry. In some way or the other, they should be a part of the ministry. Maturity says that. Perfected saints will be like that. They'll say, I want a part in this ministry. I will do this. I will do that. Let me do this. No need of calling. No, no, I will take a chair and put it like this and I'll claim my ministry in this church. I'll come and sweep this church and I'll say, I am doing it for the Lord Jesus. I'm sweeping the house of God. I have a reward for that. You're perfected for the work of the ministry. In other words, just like when they were saved in Jesus' times, you read in the gospel, there were a group of people over and above the 12 disciples. There were a group of people who always were with Jesus for the work of his ministry. They were matured saints. They knew there is certain requirement. They, Jesus needed them. Jesus needs you. How do you come into the unity of the faith? If you don't even understand that he needs you. Who are we? Body of Christ. Am I right? We need to have the unity in the spirit. Say, till we all come in the unity of the spirit, the unity of the faith, till we all, that means each and every believer, we all come into the unity of the faith. We all are the body of Christ. We stand as one body, the body of Christ Jesus. But the enemy doesn't want you to stand as a one body. He wants to bring divisions. Why? Divide and rule. If he brings divisions among you, he can rule over each one of your lives. But if you are together in faith and holding each other in prayer, there is no way the enemy can find any small room to enter each, any of your lives. 
A good church is a church which has a matured believers who comes to the church and prays together because one will chase fill in the blanks. Thousand? Are you sure? One will chase thousand. Two will chase two thousand? Ten thousand? Okay, so only one zero has to be added. So three will chase one lakh. Four will chase ten lakhs. Five will chase one crore. Six will chase 10 crores, 7 will chase 100 crores, 8 will chase 1000 crores. So you are adding value to the prayer in chasing more than one person can chase or two people can chase. When you add one more of your presence in that place, you are so, 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 so strong. You are, even if you don't pray, you're just going and showing your unity of the faith. We are one. We brothers and sisters are one. That is maturity. But the enemy will not allow. He'll say, you're very busy man. Where you have the time to go and pray in the church? Let them pray. You will get all the benefits. When they pray, you will get the benefits. You don't have to go. The enemy will say in your mind, then you will say, yes, 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 I am very, very busy. I have so much of office work. I have so much of business. I have so much. Let me focus on, let them focus. They are jobless. We are very busy. That is not the way it works. If they have made time to pray, that is the grace of God which is upon them. If you have not made the time to pray, that means the enemy has stolen that grace. When we come into the presence of God for prayer, what do we say? We come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace to help at the time of need. So we join together. We come together in faith. The unity of faith. And it says, and the knowledge of the Son of God. Unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Two things are required for maturity according to this verse. Till we come, the perfection, when it comes, till we come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. What is the knowledge of the Son of God we have in us? Did Jesus say, learn from me? As he said, anywhere he has learned from me. Do you recall? I know one place where he said this. Matthew chapter 11 verses 29 and 30. He says, learn of me. My yoke is light. Two things he said to learn of me. Can you read that? Is it there? Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 and 30. Take my yoke upon you. And Take my me. yoke upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. To whom he's saying this? To everyone who believes in him. And learn of me. For I am meek. For there are two things. For I am meek. And lowly in heart. And lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. My burden is light. So what does these two things say? One is lowly heart lowness lowly heart or mind lowly heart and, heart. and Meek. meekness see lowly in the heart is basically about humility be humble he says if you want to be like me have the humility be humble don't think too big of yourself Consider you as the lowest among the lowest. You see, if you read the, the epistles, 
First, Paul the Apostle says, I am the chiefest of the chief. After a few uh, epistles, he says, I am the, the, the least and the worst sinner of the sinners. He changed this thing altogether. First he said he is the chiefest of the chief. Now suddenly he says after that, after a few epistles, he says, if there are any cue in this of sinners, I would have been in the last. I have been so, so bad. First he was talking too high of himself. Then he said, no, no, no. Where I came from, where I am now, is the grace of God. That is humility. Even Paul the Apostle, you see among the epistles that he is admitting the change in his life. He is also being perfected over a period of time. That is the beauty of the Bible. It, doesn't, it shows the way a person is. If a David did adultery, it is said, yes, he did adultery. It is not like any other book which tries to show a very uh, uh, flying colors and the, oh, he's so good. No, no, no. David did adultery. He did encourage somebody to be murdered. Yes. He sought for forgiveness and God forgave him and he was finally called a man after God's own heart. That shows who God is. God is willing to forgive. When you, when you see is the repentance and change in our lives. Humility. Jesus says, learn these things from me. My yoke is light. Two things you learn from him. One is humility. Second is meekness. See, meekness, the deeper meaning of meekness is a controlled emotion. Meekness means a controlled emotion. Let us take the example of Moses. Moses was so uncontrolled. He also committed a murder. And he buried and looked for anybody seen. He thought nobody has seen. Finally somebody saw it. And when that person came, he wanted to kill him also. So God said, no, 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 no. I have chosen you as a leader. Now I have to teach you meekness. You have to become like me. God Almighty said, Moses, you need to become like me. So Jesus is saying, you need to learn from me. So what should we learn? Meekness, controlled emotion. And the other one is lowless, lowliness of heart, humility. These two are the main characteristics of Jesus. He said, learn of me. Only two things you learn of me, he says. One is humility, second is meekness. These two are the effect of love of God inside us. Being humble, trying to put the other person higher than you, yourself. What did Jesus say? You will do greater things than what I did. You will perform greater miracles than I did. Because I am going to the Father. He never said that, I, I mean, I did the best miracle, I did it. No, no. He said, you will do the works of what I, the works what I did. And you will do also the miracles what I did. You will be doing greater things than what I did. Because I go to the Father. So, placing the other person higher in higher esteem. But you and me know, nobody can do greater things than Jesus. We all of us know that. But Jesus was expressing how he wants to make us look important and great. And he was encouraging us, exhorting us, comforting us, saying, you can do it. So, this is how we need to be humility and controlled emotion, which is meekness. We all learn. But Jesus says, yes, you will 
have to be transformed from a not natural human way to a divine nature. From the sinful nature to the divine nature. As long as we have the sinful nature, we will argue, we will get angry, we will get offended, we will get hurt. But once you become spiritual, these emotions are controlled. It doesn't mean that it is not there. Meekness means your emotions are controlled. As long as this body which is not saved, you know this body is not saved? If you read Romans, you'll know that. 8th huh? chapter. The body is kept to be saved on the last day, in the time of the Lord's coming, where we will be putting on a glorious body. This is called as a, what is it, the one is a mortal body. That's why in the mortal body, sickness can come. But God has given us his own spirit. The same spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead is inside us, which is quickening every single cell in our mortal body. Mortal body can become, dead cells can come, but the Holy Spirit who is inside us, he quickens, he makes alive every single cell in our mortal body while we have the knowledge. I want you to be a, a, a group of soldiers for Christ. Have the same faith, same, why? We need to rise up against the enemy's works. John G. Lake had one revelation. They asked, how do you do all this? Why infection doesn't come to you? He said, one word he said. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. He said, the law of the spirit of life is operating in me. It has made me free from the law of sin and death. Everybody were dying. We don't need, I don't want to say that. If you have that type of faith, the virus which comes in contact with our body will get burnt and destroyed. Why? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In the law of the spirit of life is operating. Life, life, God's life is operating. Anything which comes in touch of this, in, in, in touch with his body, the life of God will destroy the power of destruction and death. So this body will not be destroyed. The one which is trying to come to destroy, that will be destroyed. That is the power of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Who are we? That is the question you should ask. Who am I? I have the law of the spirit of life operating in me. Which has made me free from the law of sin and death. Powerful. So maturity in Christ begins with humility and meekness controlled emotions so here we see after that unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto a perfect man now who is a perfect man who grows unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ if you are growing to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ then you are a perfect man the church is trying to make you one like that. The teaching is trying to take you to that place. Let us say you come this week. You don't come next week. You miss the points, what has been taught. You have 
half of the word, you don't have the other half. How will you grow? If you have a zeal saying, Lord, I don't want to miss anything. I will be there. Come what may, you will be in this place. You will not give an excuse. Oh, it was raining. Oh, I had a stomach pain. A bag full of excuses. The reason why I didn't come, you are excusing yourself. Pastor didn't ask. Pastor will never ask. I'm telling you, I've decided I will not ask anyone why they are not coming to church. I'm here to teach. If you are present here, you receive. Otherwise, you are absent. If you don't come for one year, you come after that for one, you're welcome. Yes, you realize you didn't get church, any other church where you, uh, you found any, you didn't find any other place where you found the truth like in this place. Yes, we are welcome. But nobody is going to be questioned why you did not come to church. Why? I'm being matured. I'm, I'm growing in maturity. I told you, perfecting of saints. But God loves you. God will always bless you. But your inner man should grow day by day. It should be strengthened. You should have the power to overcome. Live a life of dominion. Resist and reject the works of the enemy. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is roaring about seeing whom it can devour, but be stand still. Stand with faith to withstand, to overcome the, the enemy's works. You need to stand and overcome. Stand by faith and overcome. For that you need the truth. Maturity is not See, well, two subjects. One is, uh, uh, I should say, three other. One is wisdom and knowledge. One is faith. One is foundation. We give a balanced diet. When it comes to faith, 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 yes. You need to, there are some strong meat you come across when you see, when you hear faith. You may look like, a, I mean, I may look like a person who doesn't have a heart when I speak. But that is what is faith all about. It is not about anything to do with this particular world. It is something to do with a spiritual realm. It is about breaking bondages, destroying the enemies and demons powers. That is a different teaching. But this is foundational. The other one is about wisdom and knowledge. You grow in wisdom and knowledge. You grow in faith. And primarily, you have to grow in the foundation. So today, we will close with this. The third point, I said we could only see one point today. The unity of the faith. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That is the, another thing which you need to understand for the edifying of the body of Christ. Matured believers always edifies immature believers. Edifies and exhorts the immature believers. Immature believers will come and complain. They'll come to your house and complain. They'll come stand downstairs and complain. The matured believers should say, listen, that is for your good. You listen to what pastor is teaching and you will grow in strength. You will overcome. You will see good things. You will see blessings. You will not be along with them and say, no, no, yes, sir. That's yes, that is wrong. How can he teach that? That means you are also immature. A church cannot be filled with all immature believers. Maturity edifies the body of Christ. I am not saying this, please. I have given you a disclaimer. It is the word of God. If anybody has done this, please correct your ways. See, it says here, 
for the perfecting of the saints please read your bible for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ who is the body of christ believers you have been matured you have been brought into maturity you have been perfected you have been strengthened why so that you may edify the other believers if you itself is immature how can you do that for another person this is not a corporate this is not an office this is not a business place this is where the spiritual realm operates this is above your office is above your uh, corporate loss is above your business this is something which governs everything is above all church is above all you are seated in a place which is above all the word of god says the enemy is being put under our feet the grace of the lord that, that the grace of god be upon you it says that he will put satan under your feet church the where the gates of hell shall not prevail while the truth is there where the truth is there in that church the gates of hell shall not prevail we should never ever dilute the truth the truth has to be spoken the way it is it doesn't matter who gets hurt because of the truth it doesn't matter i don't care because the truth has to be spoken because of the truth if you sorrow it will bring eternal life into you the earthly sorrow will bring destruction but the spiritual sorrow the, which is coming from the word of god that sorrow will work inside you to bring eternal life to speak the truth i don't need to ask anybody's permission am i right because i am not your servant i am the servant of god what is told to me i teach that's why the disclaimer is coming nowadays for immature believers who take the word in the wrong way no please i mean if you see any video they saying this is only for educational purposes this is not for i am not a doctor i am not a this thing i am not a scholar i am not here to give you uh, i mean gains or profit yes here we say here you come only to see spiritual maturity here you come to see gain profit in your spiritual life but certainly it is not spoken for a single person it is spoken collectively which will benefit collectively let us thank god and get up and stand before his presence hallelujah lord we thank you lord for the message about unity of faith come hallelujah this is real hallelujah thank you lord we give you glory lord hallelujah we give you thanks my father for giving us this grace to share your word and you from your heart say lord we thank you lord for the grace you've given us to receive this truth in us the truth comes into us in a man to strengthen us to build us up that we may stand and overcome and we may receive the maturity in our spirit we will not be tossed to and fro like waves but we will stand still established hallelujah father we pray and bless each one in this place that each one of them lord let them grow into the fullness of Christ let them grow into the maturity and in the stature of the fullness of Christ 
Let the Lord Jesus be their standard. Let them look unto Jesus alone. Let them live a life of dominion on this earth. Let them live a holy life. Let them live a life which is pleasing to God. Let them learn these two things from Jesus. Humility and meekness. We pray and bless each one who will come to listen to this word. Let them be greatly blessed through this word in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen.